am James Smith from the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. Tonight, Timothy Bradley defended, successfully defended his WBO Welterweight Championship, taking Brandon Rios to school, old school that is, under his uh, new trainer, Teddy Atlas. He totally dominated the fight. I had him winning every round, uh, rounds one through eight. And then in round number nine, he took it to the body of Rios and stopped him. After the fight, we spoke to Bradley and his new trainer, Teddy Atlas. Tim, grade your performance uh, with me. I thought you did an excellent job of, of the inside stuff. A little different uh, in, in some points on the inside. Yeah, um, a lot of different, um, a lot of different techniques. Uh, you know, getting my head in the right position, throwing the right punches at the right time, in the right position. Um, something that Teddy, we've been working on in the gym. Um, it was different. I wanted to beat Brandon in every uh, every aspect of the ring. Um, you know, I moved my feet, but I didn't want to run around the ring. Um, a lot of good angles. Yeah, angles. That's that's what that's what we brought. That's what Teddy brought into this angles, and uh, you know, sweet science. And um, you know, I used my head a little bit tonight. You know, thinking in there, being a thinking fighter, using my jab and stepping around and finding angles, and and uh, I attacked him to that body. I, I said early in the fight, I said Bob, Bob Fitzsimmons to some one of the younger reporters. He didn't know who that was. He was the guy who invented well the solar plexus punch, and that worked. Yeah, it worked very well. It worked early too. I actually uh, snuck a little short body shot in it in the, in the first couple of rounds. Um, he felt it, and I and I saw him go uh, and kind of crouch down. But then I was like, okay, he softened the gut. I was like, ah, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna try to get as many as I can from the outside. But I'm gonna go back to that that middle when I get that opportunity when he weakens a little bit more. The angles was a big part of the camp, but it, it's not just a word. You can't just say, oh, give him angles and okay. Hey, what get out a get out a triangle and 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 start drawing angles? You know, it's more to it. I mean, it's it's teaching and incorporating that teaching and doing it and showing it and working on it every day in the gym and on the floor, and then taking it from the floor and incorporating it into sparring and and working on it and understanding what goes behind those angles behind the words you know what the actual you know uh doing of it is and where's the angle is it here is it there you know where it's got to be behind the guy it's got to be outside his shoulder if it's over here the guy can still catch you so you know and you got to be calm enough to do it and you got to do it at the right time so um, yeah, I mean, I, I was, I loved when I saw it. I got to be honest, I felt like clapping <laughs> when, when I saw him do it, and, and it, it was very nice. Listen, the game plan all night and all camp was to uh, take his aggression and spit it back at him. You know, uh, take advantage of his aggression, uh, make his aggression be a reckless aggression, and and you know, be able to fill the holes that he would provide for us and then not lay around where he could come back and answer. You know, uh, there was the meats and potatoes I told him every day was either we're catching him coming in or we're making a miss first and then countering and then we're off to the side and we're moving to the side around them. Uh, he doesn't have to fast his feet being Rio's. Let's take advantage of that. Uh, let's take advantage of him not having fast feet by using our feet. And let's not cooperate with him. Uh, you know, let's, let's take it to the sides after we, we catch him. And, you know, the mantra was uh, keep him behind us. You know, keep him one step late all night long. How important mentally is, is the implementation of, of uh, Teddy to your game plan? Obviously, we saw some, you know, some stuff physically and stylistically, but mentally it seems like there's a camaraderie there. The old school maybe is the best school. The old school is definitely the best school. Um, Teddy definitely works me mentally. He keeps me focused all the way through. He wants high intensity, high focus all the way through one round at a time, 36 minutes. I drifted a couple of spots in the ring. Uh, Teddy got on me about that, um, you know, and I and I, you know, I definitely got to get a lot stronger mentally to be able to, you know, when I step up in class to be able to compete with the, the top guys out there and and not fall asleep in spots. Listen, I can't do it without a great great uh, pupil, and uh, there's really three things that are involved. First of all, you got to be able to teach and. I guess I could teach a little bit, but to, to the real thing to do it is then you have to have someone who's cooperative, the student who's cooperative, who wants to learn. I mean, the credit to him. I mean, after all the success that he's had, to put his ego on the side and say, yeah, I could still learn more things and new things, that takes a special person. That takes a willing person, an honest person, uh, to be able to to take that attitude and say, 
I still can learn things and want to learn and be eager, then you need an intelligent student. He is, I think he's the most intelligent fighter I've ever worked with. And um, he has to be able to understand and grasp, you know, why I'm showing him these things, what they, what, you know, how they work and, and what's behind it. And he was able to understand that. And, and then to be able to be the athlete, to incorporate it, to be athletic enough to take it, to understand it, and then actually put it within the mix of what he does. I mean, it's, and, and then finally, the, the last element you need is, you need trust. And, and that means you need a good human being like Timothy who trusts you. And that's where the pressure comes for, for all of us, but for me, that you get someone to trust you, to buy in. You better not freaking be wrong. Yeah. You better not be wrong. You better not betray that trust and fail them. And as a trainer, you feel that every day. And it's tough. It's tough. It, it makes me hesitate whether or not I want to continue doing this. Uh, well, he wants you, you, no, want you to. <laughs> just, I know. And, and I want to because of the person he is and because of the success at the end of it like this, that, yeah. that you can feel this way. Um, this is what the payoff is. But to get to this, um, it, it can be... a it can be difficult. What do you want next? Um, I don't know. I, I just want some rest right now. And, uh, you know, I, I'll talk it over with my team and we'll see what's next. I there's, don't know. There's one guy, though. He's, he has a television show that's been on the air for 12 years. He's been waiting on the in ring. He's been in the ring with every world champion but you. So we got to see if we can put that together for the new year. We, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely have to do that. I, I, I would appreciate that. And I know you would, too. So, yeah, definitely. Happy New Year. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.